Hey guys, this video is about Morrigan because she's going to be in the 10x summon event this weekend. So you can get her with ancient summoning shards at a 10 times greater chance from this event. This is lasting only from Saturday the 23rd till Monday the 25th. And rather than do a detailed hero guide, I'll just quickly go over it in this video because I kind of want to share some more of my own kind of nuanced opinions on the topic rather than, you know, a really heavy breakdown video. So I actually had Morrigan quite early on the global server account. This is my Morrigan. So she's in really rough looking uh, sticks gear. And the reason for it is mainly because she's not competing end game with the best mages. So Vierna and especially Karmet are going to really overpower Morrigan. And that's honestly, that's okay. Morrigan does her job just by being a Lord, to be honest. And I'm a, a little bit disappointed, truthfully. She can do good damage. Let's just make that clear. She can do really good damage. She helped me massively when I was in the early game, when I was in the mid game, even progressing through the gear raids up to 19. But in 20 and 21, she certainly can do a good job if you give her the right resources, but those resources spent on a more thoroughbred DPS are going to go quite a lot further. I guess what I'm trying to get at is a lot of people, myself included for a long time, assumed that Morrigan was like a silver bullet that would help you clear the late stages of Gear Raid 1, and she definitely will help. She has, uh, obviously, she's the Curse Legendary Lord, and she's going to provide some really nice bonuses. But by herself, she's not going to unlock that for you. She's not going to be the missing piece unless you were already fairly close. The main keys to the late stages of Gear Raid 1 are really, it's going to be the Tier of Starlight artifact that's going to be one of the biggest things for your progression if you're on your mages. The main reason is it's just a huge dump of attack to help you overcome the enemy resistances. This is mainly going to be important in stages 20 and 21 where the resistances really ramp up. And besides just relying on artifacts, obviously you need someone to put them on. Karma is really going to be doing most of the damage for most teams. Karma really slaps and a lot of people are going to find him to be the real key to Gear Raid 1. And Vierna. In terms of damage dealers, these are going to be the two who really get the clout out. Morrigan is really going to be there to support heroes like Vierna and Iona if you have uh, built and used your Iona. Besides that, a lot of Gear Raid 1 teams are going to be relying heavily on Laurel for rage boosting, Hollow as well, and Elowin. Restoring rage to your allies and getting them to cycle through their ults faster is incredibly important. So I guess I'm talking about other heroes rather than Morrigan in this video, which is why I wanted to make it a bit looser. She is good. She is very nice. She does some good damage. She provides a really good Lord bonus. But she's not really going to be the be-all end-all for you beating those later stages like we thought she used to be. So I do think she's good. And if you are lacking a Cursed Lord, then definitely roll for her. She is very powerful. She will help you a lot, especially if you're still progressing through the game. You're not pushing into the final two stages. And even if you are pushing into the stages and you need a Cursed Lord, she is going to help a lot. But my advice if you are stuck on those final two stages would be more to focus on building your Auxiliary Heroes, Dolores, Mary. And Laurel are going to be the biggest points of success for you. And artifacts are really going to make a big difference, especially in Gear Raid 1. I would say Gear Raid 1 is probably the hardest content in the game at the moment, in, in my opinion. Obviously, that varies based on what heroes you have. But Dolores' attack boost is just ridiculously necessary. Laurel granting massive amounts of rage regen is so useful. And the CC and debuffs and the freezes from Mary are going to be massively beneficial. On that tangent, if you really want to boost your team... Morrigan is going to help massively. She is really, really going to be nice. And she will be a nice DPS. But once you're getting to the final two stages, your spots for DPS are going to shrink down. And most people tend to do it with two to three DPS. Mainly three DPS. But there's obviously going to be one or two that do most of the work. From what I've seen, that tends to be Karma, Ajax, Vienna in as well for her execute damage is massive. And then you see Silas quite a lot for his penetration helping massively. But beyond that, you want to boost your auxiliary heroes. And one of the best ways to do it, especially on someone like Mary, is via artifacts. There is a really good artifact, which I haven't fused yet on this account. And I used it in my Epic Only 19 video. But I would strongly recommend getting hold of some Nightmare Samsaras for her and building her on some attack speed just so you can get more freezes up on Mary. It really does make a big difference. That's my recommendations on Gear Raid 1. I feel like I've just kind of explained why she's not good. She is good. She does nice damage. She does have some good stuff about her. I just don't really rate her as your primary DPS. So I guess I'm just trying to temper expectations for some reason. But overall, she is a good hero. She does pretty good damage and she will definitely help carry you into the late game. But she won't carry you through the late game by herself. So yeah, I, I definitely rate Morrigan. She does some nice damage. 
but she's more of a supporting hero. You're going to rely mostly on her ultimate, and you're not going to place her towards the end, especially if you have these two guys right here, Vienna and Karmet. If you have an Ajax, Ajax is really more important, in my opinion, than Morrigan, as he is going to be massively defense-breaking enemies. I, I really didn't start this video intending to just uh, speak about the reasons you don't need her. <laughs> yeah, she's great. She is good. She is good. Uh, I don't want to keep saying she's not. So, uh, yeah, you'll get a lot of benefits from her. She does nice damage. She has good AoE potential. And she's not super expensive to place, which does go in her favor. She's only 17. A lot of them are around 19 to 20. So that is helpful. There's not really a great deal more I want to go over. I could show you her in great gear doing some good damage on the test server. <laughs> my server sucks, my gear. <laughs> but I don't know what that would achieve other than to show you that good gear is good. So... I think we'll go over how I would gear her sh if I had the opportunity to put her in ideal gear and how I would build her and where you can use her and we'll cap the video off there as a focus. So in terms of gearing Morrigan, a lot of gearing decisions on DPS is going to work around how their ult functions to be honest. If they have a low rage cap and the a short duration on their ult and you're going to use them in content where it lasts a long time, then the priority gearing for them becomes really obvious, really simple. It just becomes this. You, you're just going to want Sobound Arcana on any DPS where you can get their ultimate out five times because this is just a 50% damage bonus after five ults. After four ults, it will rival the Infernal Roar without being restricted to just basic attack type damage. Soulbound Arcana wins this one. You're going to want this one as a priority on Morrigan. Other than that, you'll probably be fine taking Ageless Wrath, maybe even Infernal Roar. Then you'll step down to the Curse set and then down to the Stick set, which is what I have on mine right now. On the left side, I think you would want to go for Calamity. The reason is you really do need to pump as much attack as you can to progress through the later stages of Gear Raid 1. The resistances get very high and mages don't have crazy base attack. Morrigan's isn't bad. It's not fantastic. It's lower base attack than both Fiona and especially Karmat. So her attack is not going to be overwhelming the enemy's resistances as easily as Karmet's would. But it is still decent enough that she's not going to struggle especially hard. But if you can get hold of Tear of Starlight, it makes it much easier. And I would recommend going for two attack and one crit damage piece on her. Because with this bonus and with Dolores, even in stage 21, she will have enough to overcome the resistance to the point of it being better to start picking up more crit damage. So that's how I recommend gearing her. I would put her in Soulbound Arcana with two pieces of attack percent main, the third being a crit damage main, and ideally go for Tear of Starlight if she's your main DPS. If she's not your main DPS, you're relying on someone like Vierna or Karmet, then prioritize giving that to them. And then if you can still put her in that kind of gear, then sure, go for it. Besides that with her skill ups, I mean, it's, it's all good, but I, I generally wouldn't really recommend investing your legendary skill crystals into her if you're a more free to play or a light spending player because they're quite restrictive getting legendary skill crystals and I would suggest putting them into someone who's more of a main DPS like Vienna, Karma or Ajax. In terms of awakenings there's a, a video I'm going to make in future going over the Sage Soulstone, the legendary Soulstone. I wouldn't recommend it for Morrigan because this is 10% damage increase on someone who isn't a main DPS and then the second one is 5% damage bonus which is nice but it's only 5% damage bonus for a second awakening on a legendary lord. So it's it's nice if you happen to get it, but I wouldn't push for it. And I wouldn't spend a sage soulstone on it. Besides that, the rest of her awakenings, I mean, generating effects on death and reducing her revival time. I think you're doing something wrong if you're relying on this too often. She shouldn't really be dead a lot. The rage regen is nice, I guess. And the ult making her bombs explode when upon hitting targets is nice, I guess. That's, that's more damage. That's pretty good. But yeah, nothing really crazy in her awakening. So... I definitely would focus on her more as a supporting hero, mainly for her Lord bonus or to place down as your third DPS. Everything I've said is really conditional on what heroes you have in your account. If like me, you have a bunch of good mages, then yeah, she's going to be more of a secondary or a supporting DPS. If you don't, and she is one of the only mages you have, she's, she's going to be fantastic. She's going to be very good. She's going to do a load of damage for you and help you get through so much content. So I think it's really important to make that quite clear. If you don't have a bunch of mages, Morrigan's going to be fantastic. My criticisms, or not criticism, my reservations come from the fact that there are better mages out there. That's not saying she's bad, it's just that there are some really crazy mages in this game. Vierna has an execute, which is nuts. And Karmet just does so much burst damage with his ultimate active. He's just splashing out such crazy hits. So I think it's more that she has steep competition more than she's not great. She is actually really good. It's just the, the competition is so high in mage DPS at the high end. So that's how I would gear her. That's my recommendations for her and, and kind of why where I place her in the usefulness. Where I would actually use her? Well, I do use her in arena. I use her in some quirky teams in arena actually. 
I do use her in my AoE team, of course, to boost my Viana stats. I think that's really nice. But I also use her in my sustained DPS team. And this isn't really like a cookie team in Arena. I just think it's fun. So I have Morrigan as the Lord, Viana for DPS, and my Reeve tanking. So this is obviously a super quirky team. The reason is... With Morrigan in play as a Lord, we're getting 30% bonus damage to enemies that are CC'd, right? And then we have Captain Reeve, who is passively slowing enemies around him. So that's going to be triggering that CC effect. Reeve is also passively healing himself when he hits enemies that are slowed by him. So he's got some great self-sustain. And this proccing these effects means that Vienna is much better off to one-shot the enemy waves with her Reaper's Grasp. And then, of course, I have Salazar to help get the earlier damage waves out and general supporting burst damage. And then I have Elowin for Rage Regen and Healing. So it's an unusual team. I kind of just like it because it's a bit fun. But I do find that it's nice to have Morrigan just to boost heroes even further. Especially in Arena, you tend to find teams relying on one or two core heroes. And the stronger you can make them, the better. So I, I do get a lot of use out of her, even just for her Lord bonus. She does contribute damage herself. It's just mainly going to be two other heroes doing it. In the AoE, it's predominantly just Vienna with Laurel resetting her ult. In sustained DPS, it's mainly Vienna with Salazar ults. As for the raid content, she's of course going to be a beast in Gear Raid 1. And I'll show you my Gear Raid 1 Stage 20 team. I haven't beat 21 yet because the game refuses to give me Tear of Starlight. And if you're on my Discord, you're probably tired of me complaining about it by now. But uh, yeah, I don't place my Morrigan as you can see. My team relies pretty heavily on just having my main two DPS up here with a Dolores. I use Zealus actually so because his ult provides the um, healing reduction with his unique artifact. And he does have his debuff applying some more vulnerability, though Mary applies the same debuff, I believe. As you can see, I'm not placing my Morrigan, and there's definitely better stuff I could do with my placements. Ideally, I would have Laurel on the right side and have a Volcor and, you know, do some cheese respawning. But in my testing, it didn't seem to quite work for me. So this is what I settled on, on the in the end to beat stage 20, mainly just boosting my core team over here to get the damage out. This is what worked at the time, but there's, there's definitely tidier ways of doing it. And when I do manage to get some more artifacts farmed i'll push for 21 and i'll rotate how i use my heroes so this is how i'm running it i'm not using morrigan as you can see but she is in the squad as you can see just in the bottom right corner so i can boost my curse heroes here which is zealous and vienna okay that's the run over and you can see from the damage vienna at the top and Carmet behind him Carmet does have a raiden lord so he has some bonuses but i decided not to go with morrigan i did a bunch of tests i did have morrigan down at points but I just didn't find the damage was good enough. And you can see Zealus is actually doing a good job. This is with Power of Dominance on. So that will heavily skew how efficient certain heroes are. It throws off the timing on Viona's ultimates, for example. But it would not be possible for me to beat 20 without relying on Morrigan's damage bonus. And um, apparently I'm getting kicked out of the game. Cool. I'm just going to close that and pretend it didn't. Ah. So as I was saying, Morrigan is pretty good. She is very nice in Gear Raid 1. Even though I don't choose to place her, her damage bonus is granting me a massive amount. It's, it's actually really helpful having her lined up in this team. So I would not overlook her even if you don't place her. It's just a really nice damage bonus to have. For me personally, obviously I'm not going to summon this weekend for her. I already have her. And knowing what I know now, would I choose to summon for her if I didn't have her? Maybe. For me, I like to do fun stuff. I don't care about being the best or being the strongest. In, in my book, that's largely down to how much you're willing to spend, and I'm not willing to spend that much. I would prefer to save for the newer lords. That's what I'll be doing, but I do have her. So I don't think there's a, a mistake. I don't think it's a, a bad decision. It's up to you. She is going to help a lot. She is great to boost your Vienna and your Zealous, but Karma is going to be doing a crazy amount of damage. People undervalue Venoma a lot, but I think Venoma is actually really quite good, and you see her in a lot of stage 21 clearances. So that's it for Gear Raid 1. Regarding Gear Raid 2, I did actually use her in my team in Gear Raid 2, and the way I used her was basically the same. I didn't place her. I used her just as a lord for Vienna, because my Vienna was not strong enough. You have to have really high damage to one shot these waves with a Vienna in 21. So I just tried to squeeze my team around to fit in my Morrigan so that it gave me the damage necessary to wipe the wave instantly. Because without her, I wouldn't have enough. In Gear Raid 3, she's not really going to be particularly useful. In the Faction Trial, she's going to be really good in Basic Trial. She'll help a lot. She'll, of course, be fantastic in the Cultist Trial, which is her Faction's Trial. In Artifact Material Raid, you're not going to find any use for her, obviously. In Tide, she'll be reasonable. I actually used her in Guild Boss when I started on this account. And she held her own all the way into like 
nightmare free until I started to get a proper team running. So I would recommend her for Guild Boss if you're progressing an early to mid game player. She does actually have decent damage when you're at that early game stage. Late game, you're not going to use her in Guild Boss at all. And she will, of course, be great in promotion raid and resource raid. So I realized I kind of made the entire video without showing any gameplay of Morrigan. So here is the best Morrigan I can muster on the test server. I, ha I haven't farmed enough gear, but it's it's pretty decent. Not ridiculous. There's no gold substats or anything here, but it's good enough to show you what she's like at the end game. And of course, with a level 25 tier of Starlight. We'll just test it in stage 20 at the moment with Power of Dominance turned off. And we'll just use a pretty standard uh, boosting lineup. So we've got Dolores for the attack boost, Laurel for the rage boost, Mary for the CC so we can proc the Lord bonuses, and Elowin to heal and provide some more rage boost. Just so we can see how Morrigan performs by herself as a comparison to how other mages would compare. Just so you can get an idea of one, just so I can actually show you what she looks like in this video rather than just talking about it. And also so you can have a rough comparison of her damage versus other heroes. So here we go. We'll do the run. We're just going to do the right side with only one DPS just so we can get an idea of how it goes. Ideally the timing would be a bit better and we'd have Morrigan's ult ready in time for the Dolores boost. But I figured it would just about overlap which would uh, give us a reasonable amount of damage. And we'll just keep cycling together until the wall dies. Probably be during these uh, blood ooze phases because she's not going to kill them by herself. But you can see she's already actually killed a number of the enemies, which is pretty good going, considering she's a sole DPS, like entirely single DPS. No one is helping her in this run. And the oozes is where most of the damage comes out, so I'll try and freeze them here. It's not going to be a fantastic test, honestly, because I'm not going to be able to compare exactly the rotations and timing. I'm not being that precise. It's just to give us an idea of how much damage she can do before the wall breaks by herself in this gear versus, I don't know, we'll, we'll try Karmet with no Lord. Just Karmet by himself in the exact same gear in the exact same setup, how well he performs. And I'm going to ult now because the wall is definitely going to break in a second. They, they really smashed that wall. Anyway, yeah, 14 enemies died. I think maybe just about 15 enemies died. So nearly 59 million damage. She would do way better if I had the team down properly and, you know, was having a careful rotations of things. But I just want to get a quick idea of how she performs. So now we have Karma equipped in the exact same gear, the away A0 Karma at max skill and using a tier of Starlight. And we'll do the exact same run, roughly similar timings probably, and we'll just see how he compares to her damage. So there we go, that's the same team. Now with no Lord, just Karma by himself in terms of DPS. We have our Mary, I guess. It doesn't, I guess she's applying a vulnerability. So there is some bonuses to be had there. We have our Laurel. The reason I've got Laurel in the middle is normally I would despawn her to get Rage back, but I'm not going to bother doing that this time around. And now we've got this down, so we can ult because Karmet's ult is ready now. And we'll just freeze them to get less damage on the wall. And look how much Karmet is absolutely just destroying this, this wave. Karmet is just a filthy monster, and nothing can stop him from devouring the world. He has no Lord bonus. It's just Karmet raw dogging these enemies. So I am uh, a big fan of Karma. I think he's insanely good. I think everyone does really, but I guess all I'm trying to show you is that Karma is a much better main DPS. And although Morrigan can do very good, very viable damage, I do think she is going to fall behind a lot of the primary damage dealers you see, such as these guys. So we're already up to a similar number of enemies killed. But I think uh, we'll have a bit more trouble now because Karmet's ult has got quite a, a big cooldown on it. We'll probably get one last ult off before the oozes destroy the wall. But it gives us a pretty good idea. We'll get a good damage comparison at the end of this. So we're 22 enemies killed and that might change a little bit more. Well, there we have it. So he killed 22 enemies in roughly the same window as Morrigan. I think it survived a bit longer as he did kill them a bit faster. And if we go to the damage results, he did 68 million damage. So a bit better. I think one of the main things you can see in that as a, a differential between the two of them is Karmet's damage is really highly concentrated and focused in bursts, whereas Morrigan's is spread more equally. She's kind of got this consistent AoE rolling damage thing going, so she's really good at reliable constant AoE damage, which is very nice, but because of the nature of relying on Dolores, relying on autumn teams and marry freezes and stuff like that we tend to have more success with heroes where they can concentrate their nuke in one window so Karmet's fantastic for that sure it's a duration based ult but it lasts long enough that you can get a lot of damage done in that window and Viernes is of course a flash nuke so i think that's part of the reason why morrigan is not quite as utilized for her damage 
because it's not as contained. You can't really control when the nuke comes out because it's not an activatable ultimate. Anyway, that's all I want to go over in this video. It's a bit meandering, so I apologize for that. I just wanted to share my thoughts on Morrigan rather than make a, a proper guide, as it were. So I do think it's not a bad idea to summon for Morrigan. She is going to help a lot. She is a really nice hero to use, especially for progressing players and people breaking into the late stages of Gear Raid 1. So I guess this video is actually probably too focused on the final stages. Most players are struggling in 18 and 19, and this she will help you massively. In Gear Raid 1, 18 and 19, she's going to be a crazy big help. Even in 20 and 21, she'll be a massive help as well. All I'm really saying is that she's better as a Lord than she is as a main DPS. But if you do find yourself able to place down another DPS, it does get a bit crowded on the platforms. The Morrigan is a good option. Once you've got loads of options, she starts to fall away a little bit at the end game. So, in conclusion, she's a good hero. She'll provide some very good damage. She's great for consistent AoE damage, but she's mainly used for her Lord bonus, which is a really nice damage bonus to the rest of her curse faction. Anyway, that's it for the video. That's all I'm going to cover. Do leave comments with your experiences with her, your thoughts on her, and uh, I wish you the best of luck summoning this weekend, guys. All the best. Take care and bye-bye.